Welcome back everyone. In this final lesson for our event app, we will cover adding more detail to the events detail page. In addition, allowing the creator to edit the event they've created. Um, so let's get started on it. To recap, uh, the previous lessons we have covered basic event creation and off an account creation. In addition, we have a homepage showing the list of available events. And finally, we have a page that shows the list of events a user has registered to. So we let's quickly extend this, um, pay, this information page. Let's say we want to show who has registered for an event for someone who is yet to register. For example, they might want to click this button and show a list of um, users who have registered to see who's going. Um, let's do that. Um, let's create a bottom sheet for this. So in order to create a bottom sheet, let's create a component. Um, so let's create a very basic component, a blank component. Let's call this registered users component. And what I want to do here is add a column. Let's add some padding, 16. And then let's add a container within. And for this container, I want to expand it. And let's also add some padding to this container. And the first thing I want to do is what I want to pass for this component parameter is the event doc as well. So let's pass the event document for the event itself. And then for the column, I want to generate children based on the registered users list. So event document, uh, registered user refs. So this will generate dynamic children of all the users who has registered. And let's add some attributes, just two very basic attributes. Let's add a photo of them. So it will be the photo URL. So, so we've got image circle. Maybe let's make a 50 by 50, something very small. Maybe not six, maybe I'll, when pattern like this, I'll pattern like this. Uh, it will be item spacing of 16. And then I will add some padding on the inside, on the left side and the right side. And for the photo, we need, because we have only a list of you registered user reference, we need to do a document from reference to grab the fields of the user. So this will be the registered user list. And now we can access the field of the user. So it'll be the registered users. It'll be the user's document, the photo URL. And then let's also add a name and add some padding to it. Um, so this will be very basic, username, display name. Um, so that's, it'll show the name itself. Um, and of course, let's make this column scrollable. So what I wanna do now here is show that bottom sheet when they click this number of registered user. So if I click here, let's add an action called show bottom sheet. And the component I want to show you is a registered user ref. Let's make this 90% and then pass in the event document, which is stored in the page parameter already. I'm going to use the safe area. I'll enable drag so the user can dismiss it by dragging. Um, also, maybe instead of transparent color, let's make this white. So now that the app has Reloaded, you can see here, I can see the event I've registered for. And then if I click the registered user, you can see that's myself here. Um, if once there's more users, it will populate down the list view. What you can also do is show a photo, a list of a row of photos of who has registered that might look nicer, uh, but ultimately it's up to you. But now you know how to access that registered user ref list to generate whatever um, UI you wanna design. So the final step I want to do, what I want to do here is um, have a edit functionality. So imagine a creator wants to edit these events. How can they edit it? Um, I'm thinking of creating a new page again um, so, you can, so the user can access it. Whether you want to do it here, like edit events here or having a bottom sheet here sorry having it as a navigation option in the nav bar here is ultimately up to you i'm just going to create it as a 
because it's much clearer here in the tutorial. So I'm just going to create a new page called a blank page again. Uh, maybe call, let's call this page my events, right? So let's also show this navbar. Let's call, let's have a edit pencil for now. Something very simple. And you can see I'm just going to rearrange this. So I'm going to show the list of events possible to register my register events and my the events I have created, i.e. my events. Um, what I want to do here is let's copy this column again and show the events I am the owner of, where I am the creator. So let's paste this into it. And the background query here is also very similar where we need to add a filter where the creator ref is equal to the authenticated user ref, user reference. And I'll just order by creator time as well. Uh, I'll keep this as is. I'll quickly deploy this. So what I want to do here is create a whole new page to edit events. What I want to do here is create a very similar page for editing events. Maybe we can use the same design here actually, um, where the, it will show similar attributes for the user. And so maybe using the same page, let's keep this separate to make it very clear and basic. So, but we need to change the action flow a little here. So I'm just gonna, I've duplicated this page. Oops. I've duplicated this page and I will just quickly remove these actions here that we have copied across from the original page. So the first thing we need to do here is pass in a parameter of the event we're editing. So let's pass in the event reference, maybe actually the event doc, and I will pass in the document, which is of type events, edit event. And the first thing we're going to show here, the initial value should be the event doc, get property document, event name. What I need to do is firstly configure this button, upload a new photo. So we're going to upload it to Firebase, and then I'll say new event photo. I'll show the snack bar here. And the action here, sorry, the path we want to configure is conditional. If there is an uploaded photo, we will show the uploaded photo. Else, we will show the original photo of the event document. So it'd be like this. Um, means when the which means that when the user first opens this page, it will show the old photo. When they upload a new photo, it will show the new photo. And then for the event start time, the initial value you want to show is um, the event start time in daytime format of YMMT and also let's show also show the time as well. So I'm just going to combine the text here like how we've done it in the past and I'll add a space and then add a JM, JM timestamp here. And then similarly for the end time, let's do something exactly the same, but we select event end date time instead. then it will be double checking, it's read only. And when the user selects this icon button here, we will make sure it's updating and setting the right form field for the new event. And then the price of ticket, we want to show the initial price, which will be the price field, price per ticket field here. And then for the dress, I wanna do something different here. Um, because the, you can't really pre-populate this with an initial value, what I want to do here is select new location. And then this is the original address I will populate in this text field or in this text here. So I'm just press this street um, field. Um, and then this button should be called edit event. So when the user navigates to this page, we'll pass in the event document, which ultimately will populate all these fields. 
Um, and then when they press edit event, we will update the document with the respective info new information. Um, taking into consideration, they may have not changed the address or they may not have uploaded a new photo. So I'll cover how to do this right now. Let's add an action to this button called update document. The document we want to update is the event doc, use the reference, and then the create a ref will keep it the same. What we want to change first is the event name where it could be changed from this text field here. The second piece of information we want to change is the event photo. So here we're going to consider the variable here. We want to copy some copy this exact um, variable here where if the user has uploaded a new photo, we will save it as the new photo URL. Else it will be the original photo. Next, let's cover the event start date time. So this is more complex because if the user haven't changed the date time, then we won't update it. Um, else we will update a new date time. So what we're gonna do here is basically, similar to how we've done it for the photo, have a conditional value that if the date time picked one is set, meaning they've picked a new date time, we'll put it as the value itself in the document. Else we will choose the original date time of event start date. And then the return type is date time and then we won't do any changes to it. And the same will apply to the end time. So if date time picked number two is set, we will choose date, we'll update the document with date time pick number two, else it will be the original event end date time. Thirdly, it will be the price. So this is very basic. Um, so it'll be the event, so it'll be the widget um, price per ticket. And lastly, it is the lat long, well, it will be the lat long name and, and all these location attributes, which will be very similar to how we've done the photo and the calendar date time. So it will be conditional. The place picker value, get place field. Let's just say if it's populated, i.e. if the lat long is populated, this means the user has selected a new page, a new location is set. Then we will show the place picker value but then we'll save the place picker value that long field. Else, else let's just reset, let's just use the old value, which is the old value from the document here. So to recap, if the user has selected a new lat long, we will select the new lat long field from the place picker. Else we will select from the event doc. And we can apply the same exact logic to name, street, city, state, zip code, country. So show again once more conditional if the place picker value is set then we will use the place picker value name field else we will use the docs original um, name which is right here let me quickly change this to something else maybe I'll change the logic here to um, not place lat, place picker lat long, but place value picker. Uh, no, place value picker. Oops, no further changes is set. We use the lat long, else that. And then we're gonna keep going um, for the street, city, and country. So let's copy and paste this variable. And I'll go address, which is street in our back end. And then next is city. So city. And then we will go to state. So it will be the place picker state. And then the document state, original state. And then lastly, I will select, the second lastly, I'll select the zip code, which is here. 
the zip code and then lastly the country from variable place with the country else it will be the original country being selected and then once let's chain this action up so let's trust snack bar saying event updated and then let's navigate back to the my events page let's just do that something very basic here and let's refresh this app and see if it works well one last thing before we actually properly test this for the my events we need to navigate to the edit event page instead of event detail so let's navigate to edit event we need to pass in the new parameter of event doc for this document and then that should be it let's reload this now that the app has reloaded let's edit this event so let's call this event called edit and then instead of maybe we choose a new photo let's make this leaf photo here we'll upload it and then we won't change the event start time end time um, and let's pick this to be 11.99 instead of 10.99 because of inflation and then in a new location let's call let's change it up the street right 100 george street city the rocks um, and then let's press edit event so you can see here if we go to the actual event being shown to the user who have other users you can see we've changed it to 100 george street 11.99 with the new photo but the start time and end time remains the same because we didn't change those fields if you don't change the photo we won't change the photo and so on and so on um, so that's how editing events work so you can see here we've built a pretty quick event app in a span of 40 minutes where a user can create an event they can also view events to register to they can see their registered events and of course a creator can edit their own events so this reaches the end of this tutorial. Remember to comment, like, or subscribe for more content on Flutterflow.